Specular reflection is a technique to examine the surface quality of tissue that reflects light. In this instance, we will be looking at the corneal reflections, and in particular the endothelial reflection. The technique will allow us to see the cellular structure of the endothelium, provided the resolution and magnification of the slit lamp are of sufficient quality. In order to achieve specular reflection, we need to observe the reflection of the illumination system's light source. In this figure, we can see the illumination system being directed at the apex of the cornea, making an angle I with the normal N to the corneal apex. In compliance with the law of reflection, the reflected ray will make an angle R to the normal N and the angles I and R will be equal. Due to the curved nature of the cornea, the normal N to the cornea will change across its surface. So here, when we look at a more peripheral part of the cornea, we can see that the normal is at a different direction so that the incident angle I and the reflection angle R, still equal to each other, will be orientated differently. We can see in this figure that this will allow us to keep the microscope directly in front of the patient. The key point is that depending on where we want to observe the corneal endothelium, we need to orientate the slit lamp so that the incident and reflection angles are equal. In the real eye, here, we have kept the microscope in the straight ahead direction and have formed a corneal section and we can see the reflection of the light source formed by the cornea to the left of the section. By adjusting the brightness and also the thinness of the slit, we can form a clear section of the cornea and then we're going to move the corneal section that is formed as a result of scatter onto the bright corneal reflex. Once the section is on the corneal reflection, we will be able to see a reflection of the endothelium as well as from the epithelium. So here on the real eye, we can see that we have a corneal section and on the same side as the illumination system, we can see the reflection of the light source. This reflection is also known as the Purkinje image. As in the diagram, what we will do is move the corneal section onto that Purkinje image. When the section is moved onto the Purkinje image, we will only be able to see the reflection of a small area. So we can reduce the height of the section so that only the area that the Purkinje image falls over is examined. This will enable us to see the endothelial surface better. Here, as the examiner moves the section onto the Purkinje image, both the epithelial and endothelial sides of the corneal section will glow. A quick check to make sure this is being done correctly is to close one eye and then the other. The reflection will only be seen out of one eye, as it is a monocular technique. Here we can see the diagram of what we've achieved. We have a section that has been moved onto the Purkinje image and we can see how the epithelial and endothelial surfaces are glowing. What we need to do is to look at the endothelial surface in detail while ignoring the bright epithelial surface on the left. Here we have the endothelial surface in focus and it's very important to try and keep the corneal section nice and sharp and that will help ensure we focus on the endothelial surface. Now we have the section formed on the Purkinje image, we are going to focus it so we have a really nice sharp corneal section. And once we have that, we can start widening the slit a little so we can examine a large proportion of the endothelial surface. With an interplay of reducing the brightness of the slit and thickening up the slit a little, we will be able to see the endothelial surface. The endothelial surface is viewable because most of the light which is coming from the illumination system will be reflected off the endothelial cells and in towards the microscope, as shown by these yellow arrows. At the curved surfaces where the cells meet, the light will be reflected away from the microscope in another direction. As a result of this, they will appear relatively dark, 
So the endothelial cells will appear as bright hexagonal surfaces, while the edges will appear to be black, so that surfaces will be outlined by a black border. Here is the picture that we would see.